Welcome to the Gigging Success Podcast. And now, here's your host, Brad Lazarus. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the Gigging Success Podcast, where you'll discover the tactics and strategies of some of the world's most successful cover bands that'll help you fast track your way to more of those better paid gigs you deserve. Well, in this particular show, I'm really delighted to welcome uh, actually an old friend of mine. I go back many years with him. His name's Dominic Halpen. And the reason I wanted to get him on is because he's really seamlessly blending uh, his cover band project um, with his originals project. Uh, He's earning a full-time, he's a full-time pro. He's earning a full-time living. He's supporting his uh, wife and kids doing this as well. And he's been doing it for many years. So he's got a lot of information which I know you're going to want to hear uh, because he's got a huge amount of experience. We cover a bunch of different things about how he organizes his time, what his focus is on. His his uh, his focus actually is 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 big time on video as well, which he'll talk to us a little bit about, uh, and how he's managed to um, keep things going for so many years, uh, mixing these two projects together. So I hope you enjoy the interview. Uh, And if you've got any questions, comments, then email me, Brad at giggingsuccess.com. Um, I'd love it if you could go to the iTunes store and leave a, a comment uh, about the podcast, a positive one, if possible, that would be fantastic. So let's get straight into it. And uh, here comes the interview. Right, so I'm here with uh, Dominic Halpen. Um, Dominic, I full disclosure here, I've known Dominic for quite a number of years. I've uh, been following what he's been doing. We've actually worked together on a number of occasions as well. I've booked him out uh, on some corporate and private events in the past. So um, what Dom's doing a fantastic job of is mixing um, the work that he does as a cover band artist with uh, an originals project. So Dominic, how are I'm you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you, Brad? Good. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thanks for your time for coming on. Um, I thought it was I was really keen to get you on because of that mix yeah. that you're so successfully uh, have been pulling off and I continue to pull off over the years. Um, and you're really you're, you're working full t- as a full time pro mixing those two, broadly speaking, those two elements. That's right. right. A real juggler with both of them going on and right. various things. Yeah, it's good. Um, so, t- so tell us a little bit about your um, your kind of projects at the moment, so people could we can put people into the, into context. Okay. Um, obviously, my main band is Dominic Halpin and the Honeybees. That's my full time working. What I sort of call my I don't like the word function band, but it's it is my my yeah. Band. We we call it event event band. band. There you go. Yeah. Um, so a bit more dignity. So it, it. Yeah. and that will do the um that that basically pays for 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 me to survive so that that looks after everything and and the kind of work that that is is um, a mixture of weddings corporate um some venues um around around the place but we and we travel a lot with that we'll do a lot of up and down the uk but we also go overseas quite a bit with that and um and do the odd little um show on a ship from time to time we'll jump on a cruise ship very rare these days but sometimes once a year or twice a year sometimes at a pinch we'll go and do that uh so that's what dominic halpin and the honeybees and that's kind of that's a five piece uh full-time working band that um um yeah it's kind of the the, the style of music's a kind of vintage-esque throwback so it's a bit of swing a bit of rock and roll uh that kind of vibe and it's perfect for um for that sort of function work really so so that's my main thing and that will be probably out um anywhere from the minimum of two a week to to sometimes four or five a week um that's what that group will do um and usually at weekends it's the full-time band sometimes what i've had to do um to to fill the diary midweek things sometimes will cut down the, the the members of that of that same group just so that we can kind of survive or, or some members of the band can survive early on in the week we'll cut down that to sometimes a trio um and i'm fortunate that i actually play guitar and sing so i'm always in the mix and uh, i can go down to a duo or a soloist if i have to but i haven't done that for years 
So, so that's Dominic Halpin and the Honeybees. And then um, aside from that, I've always had a passion for writing music. That's just something I've just done since I can remember. So I've always liked, you know, I've always been in those, um, when I started off, always been in those uh, original bands where you, you're playing either punk or rockabilly or whatever it is. And I've, and I've loved that process of creating songs. So as this band's been up and running and fairly successful as in, you know, we've been able to make a living out of it. Um, as, as I put all the, all the marketing things in place, it's freed up a little bit of time to, to get back into that. So the last few years I've, um, I, I've, you know, revisited that sort of writing and recording and, and building that sort of thing up. And, um, and, and that's been great. So, you, you know, with nowadays with studio technology, you can do all of, a lot of recording and, and that sort of stuff at home. So, and, I, and I'm, I'm really passionate about that. So I, I've always loved sort of that DIY recording process. So, so having a, a sort of mini studio at home that can do the front end of bands and then using various software to simulate other, other parts of the group. Uh, I've always found that I've been writing songs and then, um, and with that now with the technology available to you with the internet, um, it's quite easy to get that stuff online and in front of people that, um, you know, it may or may not do something. And I've been quite lucky with songs, um, that I've sort of made videos for that they've been seen and, and, picked up for various films um around the world and and that's that's sort of you know give me more incentive to carry on and and write and record more um Mm. you've kind of just you've glossed over um a bit which is which is probably um quite a big thing for you isn't it which is video video yeah it's 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 one of those things i mean um I lived in Australia for many years. I, I left England when I was about 17, 18 and I uh, went to Australia to seek my fortune and I ended up staying there for like 18 years. I had a backpack and a guitar and I had a normal job over there and then, and I used to play music over there primarily for fun. And then it became one of those things where I had, you know, it got to a point where I was working four nights a week and had a day job and one of them had to give and I just didn't want to live with the regret. So I, I, I ditched the job and played the music and obviously went down a few rungs financially in the ladder, but it wasn't long before putting that time into music built me back up again, but it was fun. And so and making videos was, was, was a really important part of, uh, of, of, you know, having that fun. And, uh, you know, we would, it would just be cobbling a video camera together and some guys together in parks and, and videoing, um, you know, as to a track that we'd recorded, you know, in the lounge room. And so that was the, the bug. And, and, and again, like, like with recording equipment now, the video technology is, is, is there now. You can, you know, anybody with a, with an iPhone or with an iPad and a, and a microphone, you can, you can, you can make a music video. It's, it's not the technology that's holding. Uh, anybody back these days it's just the idea and the the drive to doing it so I, mm. and i've really loved making music videos i've, I've really enjoyed that process because it's just fun to do and silly you know so how i mean briefly we won't go too technical how are you because your videos look fantastic they look very professional yeah. how how are you at, i mean how what are they costing you what are you and what are you doing to to keep the costs down and get them out there? Uh, the, so far, the the, um, the budget's um, zero. So far, <laughs> right, <laughs> I yeah. haven't paid anything for videos because I've right. um, myself and there was one video that uh, um, we made a um, oh, what was it? It was a song. It was an old '60s song called Fireball XL5, and we thought we found this. One of the bars that we played at in Liverpool had a great room upstairs and it was all white. And I thought, oh, that's great. That'd be like <laughs> the inside of a spaceship. So I had this idea that we'd just film ourselves miming up there. So we mm. did it and uh, we had to go and find these. Um, we thought, we'll have, we'll have us in suits, but in space helmets. So <laughs> so we were out for a day looking around for, for space helmets, which ended up – actually, that cost money to buy them. We actually spent about six pounds on these pop iron. <laughs> Uh, balls that we cut um, uh, visors into so we made that video and then um 
and that all looked great. And then I, I had this crazy idea that before the the song started, I wanted to make, um, you know, like James Bond, the film, they always have that, that scene at the beginning, which is just an epic scene before the song starts. And I love that idea. So I thought I wanted to do that with the music video. So I thought I'll have this dramatic uh, thing happening before. And that's when, you know, about four months of my life just got taken over with learning how to do um, um, sort of CGI work and uh, after effects and all this kind of technical stuff that I wanted to create um, this sp- uh, fantastic space scene happening and a space battle. And then at the end of it, would the, the camera would fly into a porthole of a spaceship and there we would be doing the uh, the music. So so I get kind of obsessed with these kind of ideas that are a bit far fetched, but I, I, I sort of pursue them and they seem to pay off by uh, just, yeah, just learning as I go. I, I know I want to make this effect, so I learn how to make that effect. I don't learn the whole program. I just learn the bits that I need to learn. So with music videos, I, I, a lot of them have been um, just they're all kind of a homegrown sort of thing and, and roping friends in to help out. Um, the last one I did, I, 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 I pulled in a good friend who was who does a lot of wedding videos, but really high class wedding videos. And he wanted to experiment with his new camera. So I thought, well, that's perfect. We Let's do a, a video. And a lot of the time with music videos, um, it's looking around at what what i've got in my closet so i have i have a a ventriloquist puppet and i thought "Ooh, there's a video so so that became the the pinnacle point of the last video that i made and um and then a a few months before that i made this i'd I'd written this uh quite moody song and i wanted like a um a hotel room to, to to shoot it in like a quite moody sort of scene and uh, we were doing a show over in Bradford and I wanted a real rundown sort of uh, hotel um, place that, you know, could be, have, you know, it could be seedy and all that. So I, obviously I wasn't going to say that to the manager that I wanted his hotel for that. So I said, can we borrow one of your rooms? Because we're doing this really nice video and your place is gorgeous and all that. And, and um, he gave us the room for the night. And we just after the show, we played the show down there in the day. Uh, me and the bass player went up there with a little handheld camera and just shot some of the scenes that I wanted. I videoed a little bit on the way home and we had a music video. So and uh, so I, I put it together in um, Final Cut is what I used to just sort of glue everything together. Um, so I use Apple stuff quite a lot for music and mm. for video. And uh, it's not the cheapest things in the world, but it just works. And it's uh, and then, you know, you just a couple of clicks and it's up on YouTube and. And then I, I tweet it and Facebook it and do all of that stuff and uh, do a mail. So you, so, so, so tell me how that, how you manage then to, you've got these kind of, you've got these two projects. So you've got your cover band stuff and you've got your original stuff and you're, you're married, you're, you're, you're merging those two together yeah. while also keeping separate identities. Yeah. Uh, is, is one helping the other and vice versa? How's, how do you find that plays yeah, out? Originally I used to have this issue about, merging the two and i I used to think Mm. that they need to be completely different and and separate and people aren't going to get one if they're into the other and it's going to confuse clients coming to the website and i used to have all these dilemmas that which are on you know a normal sort of dilemmas to have um but what i found from actually doing doing it is it's it's actually it's been okay. It's been good. In fact, I think that people who genuinely like one of the aspects of something that I do kind of like the other one as well. And so um, my website, if you if you go to the homepage of the website, it's very much geared towards straight away if you wanted to book the band. And yeah. all the stuff on there is because I think 90 percent of people who go to the website uh, stumble across it through Google or whatever they do. And so they want to see things that they may want at their party or whatever. So it's geared up for that. But it doesn't take long to make a few clicks on that and learn that there's more to me than just that. And then there's the other side of things that uh, that I'm involved in. 
Um, mm. And I because there's there's a lot of there's a lot of hang ups, isn't there, between uh, amongst uh, well, if in the market for original stuff that yeah. you can't you can almost can't be seen to be doing covers. I know there is, isn't there? You know, and it's. it's... Uh, what's your take? Of, what what is your feeling about that? I mean, you've, you've obviously kind of you're at one with it, evidently. But I mean, how long did that take you to kind of get over? Yeah, it was it was more about. I mean, I was I was never hung up on it from a doing point of view. I have no problem telling people how I pay the mortgage and all that, because I, I feel like, you know, it, it's an honest, it's an honest living. And I love it. I absolutely love playing live. That's if I if I could just do one thing till I'm old and gray, it'd be playing live more so than selling records and anything. There's something about that. So that happens whether I do my original stuff or whether I do the um, I, I don't even like the word cover stuff nowadays because I still feel that what I do is honest enough and, in, and the interpretation is is honest enough to I, I never think of it as covers. I guess that's probably the answer. I don't think that when I sing um, a song by Eddie Cochran or or a song by uh, Frank Sinatra, I don't feel like I'm doing a cover ever. I just feel like I'm doing the song. and. Um, right, so it's all okay. So you've you've yeah. psychologically you've dealt with that. Yeah, and it's it, yeah. it's um so I think that that kind of helps and uh, um yeah. So like when when I do the um my original stuff, you see that's that's interesting now as well because what I I usually do is like if I've got a room full of people who've come to see a show of of what I'm doing with my own stuff, I will put covers in there. But it, the balance is completely the other way. So I might put three or four covers in there. But when mm. I say covers, they, they might be really old songs that I just choose to do and talk about and and and, and um, give people a little story about them. And uh, so it's 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 more me, but it's not me doing stuff that's, um, you know, at a, at a wedding or whatever. And I think where I, I, I change tact is whether or not are people coming to see me or am I there? to entertain the people who don't know who I am it's those two different uh, sort of hats that I wear you know like if you're at a function or a wedding no one's there specifically for you you're there to do a job and entertain whereas if people are coming and paying money to see you then it's you know it's a slightly different approach to it mm. you know so that's well, let's we we, we talked we've kind of touched on there uh, the wedding and kind of corporate and private event stuff. Yeah. So, so let, let's kind of dig a little deeper into how you get the work for <laughs> Dominic Halpin and the Hover, Honeybees, yeah. which is uh, I don't want to use the word now, but I'm going to for ease the cover band yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, what because I mean you've you've been going for quite a number of years with yeah. that, and I know in the early days you were very big on the search engine optimization side sure, of yeah. things. Mm-hmm. How's that? How's that progressed over the years? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I did spend a lot of time working on all that, and um, um, and I think maybe you know five years ago, or whatever, that was kind of important. But what I think is more important now is just having um, an identity as a band and actually just getting out there and doing it. And one of the things that uh, I've always done with the group is keep it working. So. Uh, when we started out, we were doing shows, uh, local shows, um, for nothing, for absolutely no money whatsoever in a venue that looked nice and that we could have people come down and build up a bit of a, a rapport with. And, and, and that was, and, and that's something I used to do back in Australia quite a lot. Um, there were venues there in Australia, like, for example, at the, the bottom of the, the Hilton Hotel, there was a great bar called the Marble Bar. And it was the most stunning, most beautiful bar in Sydney. And I've always, I always wanted to play there, but they were saying, no, we only, we only, we only take duos and solo acts. So, um, what I did was I, um, I said to them, um, you know, we'll do it as a band and we'll, we'll take the solo money or duo money, whatever. And it was the smartest thing I did because, we we us in that venue attracted great clients uh, so, mm. and so i knew from an early early in the early how did you do that just by performing or were you going around and working the room you had some cards what, what were you actually doing just, there to really get the value out of that just being seen in there so we were we were you know we were playing uh, for an after work crowd on a business day on a thursday night and we were doing we were, we worked really hard in that bar and we had a lot of people in there that were 
business people and they got to know that night that thursday night was a was a great night to come down after work and enjoy yourself so we've sort of built up a um you know a name because of that and so it didn't take long before then people were taking cards and 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 booking started coming in for other things and then then the sydney casino heard about us and they gave us a residency and it just all sort of snowballed from there so when i came to england i kind of wanted that same i took that same idea where i thought well you know i'm not going to just wait around for the phone to ring i'm not gonna um you just wait for the high paying gigs i'm going to find a room where we're going to look good and sound good and then i'm going to just um play there and, and what it does obviously you know you you get really good as a band by doing that and you know you the clients slowly start coming down and you can and one of the most important things for us but when you say sorry just to clarify when yeah. you say clients slowly can't start coming down yeah. are these people that have, are, are just at the venue anyway or have they made an inquiry about you and you've said look we're playing at so and so venue come down and check us it's out various or? ways i think just being just playing in a nice venue on a regular basis uh, word of mouth gets out and things start happening from that people do either come down or they'll make an inquiry and or they'll see and then they'll someone will mention the name and they'll have a look on the website the phone will ring and then one thing that i'm always able to do now is when someone hasn't seen us i'm always able to offer them to come and see us mm. and i always think that's really important you know i always say you know the, the date's free if it if it is and you know, before you make the commitment, why don't you just have come and see us at such and such a venue? And uh, and that's always paid off. That's always been. Uh, a so even if you're just doing like a duo or a trio, but you're booking a larger, they're looking for a larger band. It's still a good opportunity, isn't it, for them to come and check you out and have a conversation, exactly. build a relationship. Yeah, that's right. And um, so even now, we still do that now, even though we're, we're very busy. The reason the more the reason I do it now mainly is to keep the band oiled. I mean, we're not one of these bands that because we work quite a lot, we don't rehearse. So what I do is I I, I keep regular gigs going and then that way we can introduce new songs and and just sort of you know keep the keep the keep the band well oiled really so i'm i mean i'm a big fan of residencies and uh obviously they're not you know they're not corporate work or whatever so it's, it's a different fee structure but it it's to me that's really important i think if you if you if you're a so-called working band i think you need a residency i think you need to be playing at least every week somewhere um and that's right so because you've you've done a an incredible job of kind of seeking out the places to actually go and play or almost kind of creating your own slot that's right i've noticed yeah yeah i mean sometimes it's it's uh again uh, one of the things that i've done many a times where i've I've gone to a, a room that i like and they might only have music on a, on a friday and a saturday or a thursday and a friday and i'll say to them give us a tuesday night saying mm. well we can't afford to have you i said well give it us and maybe you know if the place can do food give us a, give us a meal and some soft drinks or whatever and let's just see how we go and and that's paid off many a time where they've given us that night and then they've seen value in keeping that night going or so what what value i mean have you you've literally just gone in there and, and pitched that to the manager yeah. in that venue have you what what is it that you think they've they've have, have they seen an increase in the number of people coming through the doors or what do you what is the reason you think they've actually kind of kept you on well i think again i'm i'm a i'm a realist when it comes to what they can afford for um for for a group so i i, I know venues can't you know fork out a lot of money so i've got to i know where that's got to be pitched financially for them and i think i've always said to any venue is i don't want to work here unless it works both ways you know we both get something out of it then everyone's happy so i've always had that opinion that you know we want to build up this night on this such a day and then and then we're fine and if we can get it to this level maybe you can stretch the money to this so that these guys are happy to drive there and back and what have you but you know i mean we do a we do a, a residency over in liverpool which you know it's not fantastic money but we love it because it's a great place to play in front of clients and they look after us I know there's, there's no budget for them to really go any more than what they're doing. Um, but we've, we've been there for like four or five years, you know, 
Mm. And it, so it pays off. It, 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 you know, we get a lot of work from it. Because, you, I mean, you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're in the mid to higher end of the market in terms of what fees you're charging as well. So yeah. evidently people do want to come and see you. So you're, you're using those, seem to be using those, uh, kind of pub and club and bar shows. Yeah for lots of you know leveraging on that yeah incredibly well by the sound of it it is and uh, and i think that um sometimes i mean i've i've, I've collected over 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 the, the last few years some good footage of us playing at sort of corporate events and things like that so putting those kind of videos online mm. on the website has really helped so people see us in a club they'll go to that then they get to see oh wow they can do this they can Right. this room and get this room jump in and do this so then so they're piecing it all together yeah, and yeah. each step along the way they're kind of growing in confidence about that's you. right it's not just word of mouth it's not just me telling them what we can do eventually they get to see it uh, by coming yeah. to one of the bigger shows on the friday night or whatever that we still do public or get online now and have a look at what we're doing and there's no there's no smoke and mirrors there that's that's the, that's the real thing you know Right. So when so when you get your you're taking because you used to work with um you used to have like a, a somebody that dealt with your bookings that was your sax player Nigel, yeah. that was Nigel yeah. wasn't it yeah now you're 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 now taking all the inquiries and dealing with all the bookings yourself is that yeah, right yeah I do it pretty much all myself now Nigel is still you know uh, you know he, he's you know he's been there since the beginning and helps out a lot with uh, with um, certain schedule and there's a lot of uh, people who know nigel that have dealt with nigel for for years and, and continue mm. to deal with nigel but i think new inquiries coming in now I, I, i've i've sort of taken on that so what are you doing when just to kind of get into the kind of the, there's a bit more of the detail when an inquiry is coming in that's coming in through your website yeah. right mm -hmm. and then wh what are you doing when that inquiry comes in just talk us through that through that process then okay it'll either come through an inquiry form or it'll come through a phone call Either way, they'll come to me pretty instantly and I'll, I'll respond to them instantly uh, in some shape or form. And if it's, um, you know, we'll check the diary first of all, see whether we're free on the, the, the day they're, they're looking at. And then we start, you know, communications have started then. And um, one of the things that we have as a, as a group of we and um, I've, I've learned this again over from from doing a lot of weddings and corporate shows where you know, there are a lot of times when you need to communicate with the client all the way up to the show. Mm. And, um, and usually, um, it's, it's regarding things that I might not need to be involved in. Like, you know, like, uh, uh the, have we got pat testing certificates? Have we got, um, what time are you loading in? What's mm. the, and all the sort of technical stuff that's, um, mm -hmm. and so what I, have done over the last few years i've got these um guys involved with me from a production point of view and what they do is uh, they're a production team and one of them's a professional dj so nine times out of ten when we do a a, a, a function or wedding a corporate show i try and um tell the client get the client to sort of look at us as a whole package rather than just you know our little slot of music for the night let's look at the whole thing how much lighting do you need how much sound do you need what's the idea when we finish or, or in the break or have you thought about microphones for speeches and all that so i've got this company that take care of all of that and we offer that basically to the client at an extra cost and what's great about that is that it's kind of like a one-stop shop you know where the client let's say for example it's a wedding the client through through the production company can basically say right what we would like is uh the band to do you know we we offer like a little tearaway jazz maybe instrumentally thing at the beginning of the day or evening and then we're going to have some speeches and then we can have some background music over dinner then the band can do a first set then there's some more background music in the break and then the band can do the final set and then we can have some disco music till 1 a.m or whatever it is and we can offer that whole thing rather than just our little segment and, and then run so and what's really appealing to the client is that they just basically can deal with one person and get all of that covered and know that it's all scheduled and we're not turning up to a gig and hustling for space with a dj or didn't know this was on or didn't know they had a, a sound meter didn't know we you know we don't have any of that worry we know that mm. um so my my uh, production team 
basically once I've made contact with a client and it looks like it all it's all going ahead and I've done maybe the negotiating on a on a ballpark figure depend you know um I hand it over to Martin then which is the production manager and he will then piece together exactly what they need and what that's going to cost for their services and all the rest of it and then my next contact really is Martin he will let me know when he wants me at the venue for right. his- but how are you are you then taking the are you taking the quote that you're getting from the production guys putting that together with a quote that you've got for your band and then sending that through to the client for to, for them to give the go ahead yeah i, I i'm given on the phone, I, you know, I like to give them an idea of what it's going to cost. And I've got a rough mm-hmm. idea of what the production is going to cost, depending on the area that the, the show's in. Um, so I've got a, a fairly accurate idea of what it's going to cost them, mm-hmm. unless it's an overseas thing or something like that. You know, I've got a good idea of what it's cost. But then, uh, and um, so I can piece that together. I'll just, I'll hand it over to Martin if he's involved. Um, because sometimes a client, you know, doesn't want that. They just want a short and sweet band in, band out. And we've got our own production that we can use to do that. So mm-hmm. if it's going to that other level where we get Martin involved, I, I still I kind of do the deal on the phone and then I'll hand it over to Martin. And what Martin will do is he'll find out all the he'll get all the details for the venue and any 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 paperwork that they require. He will then get a contract out to the client. And, um, and. Oh, so he's doing your contracting he, for you. Right. Interesting. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so he will take care of that then. Uh, which again, it's just, um, makes it so much easier from, from the. Yeah. So that, so that's freeing up a whole bunch of time for you yeah. to go and work on other things. Of course it is. Yeah. That's right. You know. Right. And, uh, you know, we used. To- so you're, you're kind of almost, are you, do you feel as though you could be taking slightly, uh, you, 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 you could be making more money on that, couldn't you? But you've evidently kind of, you could be making a margin on the production stuff that you're putting out there for the client. Yeah. But yeah. by the sounds of it, you're it, kind of happy not to because it's freeing up your time. Oh, absolutely. And uh, right. the, the guys that we've got are just so, so good at what they do. They really right. do make the night smooth. And I know that when I turn up to a show with those guys, everything's taken care of. And I love that. And that's just, right. to me, that's worth a lot, really, you know, because I can go to the show and I don't have to, you know, um, stress about any of the technical issues or any of the yeah. issues. I know that it's all been taken care of. It's all been dealt with. Going so to- tell, tell us a little bit about your, um, the kind of the structure of the band, because there's obviously you as main band leader. Yeah. And you've got a, you're contracting each of your band members per show. Is that That's right? True. Fundamentally. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, how, how, how are you managing that? Cause I know, uh, a lot of listeners have issues with, you know, the band pulling in the same direction of, as them. Right. How would you suggest they kind of deal with things? And what have you it's, learned about that? It's, um, we, we've, we've had the same lineup now for a number of years. Before that, it was a little bit, uh, hit and miss and, and members came and went and um but now we've really settled into a group of guys and um and it's all well and there's a couple two of the oh three of the guys in the band only do this so they only do this and then we've got um uh the piano player sometimes we'll do other shows with other other people and uh, and that's okay. I don't mind that at all as long as we get enough warning or vice versa. He keeps us as the primary sort of. Right. And right. we've got we've got people that we can bring in if we need to that we've used many times. So that that's not a problem. Um, and I think what's happened is over. You know, sometimes the gigs will be rubbish money. And in the early days, it kind of upset some of the other players that we used to have. Mm. And, and I, and it's a shame really because if, if I were to, you know, if I say, right, this gig's only going to pay you whatever, 50 pounds or 25 pounds. It's a local show on a Wednesday night. They, they, they would have got upset about it. If I'd have said we're rehearsing on a Wednesday night, they would have turned up. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and, it, and it's, and, and in my head, I've always seen it as a bigger picture. Whereas if I said to them, you know, by the end of the year, you'll have earned, you know, 15 grand or whatever it is you've earned, you know, 
but you have to turn up to this gig, that gig, this gig, and that gig, you know. Then- right, so you're kind of, you're presenting it to them in a more of a kind of holistic way rather than a gig by gig Absolutely. basis, right. I- so they can see the value in the act and what it is you're offering. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, and, you know, I think that's, it's important to, um, to look at it as a bigger picture. And, um, and that's, that's mm. kind of what we've done. And, you know, we're, we're one of those groups where, you know, we, we, we kind of wear, we have outfits and jackets that we wear. We try, we're a very stylistic group. So that kind of helps it as well. Cause I think once the lads are in that sort of mode and they're, they're on the gig they know that they're kind of part of something and it's um i don't know it's a it's a light hearted way to sort of you know we're not in blacks just in the corner just sort of reading a chart we're actually entertainers doing that mm. doing our thing and um and that and like i said the group of guys now that we've got get it they get the bigger picture and um so there's no you know mumbling under their breath about a certain fee or whatever because Right. But but you but it sounds as though you've been very instrumental in communicating that bigger picture to them. Yeah. Do you, think, does it is that would I be right in saying that? Or? I think so. I think it's um it's one of those things, I mean we've you know, we'll work hard through the year and then we'll get some really great shows where we're flying here or flying there and doing some really nice upmarket things and we're all sort of treated like royalty and we all get a five-star suite to ourselves each and there are these sort of pinnacle points uh through the year that these sort of things happen and they kind of like you know that all and they they understand that those things would not have happened if we hadn't done all the little steps along the way to Mm. act good and get that scene that scene in that venue and vice versa and so so they get they get that and it's not me sort of voicing it to them that i think they understand that you know i'm a i'm a hard worker i i work you know there's not a day goes by i don't do something for the band in some shape or form that's what i do you know i've always believed that anyone in this world if you if you work for a company and you you get up at i don't know seven o'clock and you get home at six o'clock you know, that's a lot of hours dedicated to somebody else's business. If you put that time or even half of that time into anything of your own doing, it's going to be successful. And uh, so I do that. I work really hard in the days uh, to keep the whole thing oiled. And, you know, I don't ask a lot of them other than, you know, get to the gig on time, uh, you know, uh, play well, enjoy it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an easy band sort of leader really in that sense mm. so they get it they get what's needed you know and um uh, excellent no it sounds it's it sounds like a, a great ethos yeah. what just t- tell us we're kind of coming towards the end but tell us a little bit about i mean the your website obviously is it, yeah. how how important has the website been for both the kind of cover stuff and the original stuff because obviously you've got it yeah, yeah. it's is, is that is that very much the home oh yeah i'd say so i think it's been really important the website that's kind of like where you basically you know i mean people are looking for a, a band for a for a corporate show or a wedding they they the, the look of it is really important of course you've got to sound good but that you know they've got to want you there so that the, the the website's been really important to portray that. So a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, a lot of sort of graphic sort of stuff. And now there are programs around that you can do this stuff with. Again, like 10 years ago, there was Dreamweaver and some really complicated programs where you pay a lot of money to get websites built. And then once they were built, they couldn't be changed easily without paying more money in that. That's not the case anymore. Now you can build these things quite so what are you using to build uh, I'm your using uh, an Adobe program called Adobe Muse, which is like um, right. Adobe stuff now is sort of subscription based. Most most programs are going that way now where you pay a monthly fee and um, and, you know, you just get all the free updates and away you go. But it's 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 brilliant because Adobe Muse is one of these sites, uh, one of these programs where you don't need to know any code. You don't need to know anything. You don't have to learn anything. It's basically all drag and drop. So where do you want your menu? Where do you want your text? Where do you want your, your, your videos? And, and it's just, you're dragging stuff from, from your, from your desktop into position and then it's just working mm. it all out itself. So, so I've used that and, uh, and, uh, and I've recently just 
made it sort of mobile friendly now because that's on the increase now, mobile mm. tablets. So they've got to work on those platforms. So. Yeah, well, we were finding 30 to 40 percent of the traffic. Yeah was coming from mobile devices which is incredible really well i i noticed that it shows now you know people look at the drum skin and see the name and then they're they're, they're on their phones with a thumb typing it in and uh right, right. You, you see that a lot and so so it has to kind of work on that you know to me you know quite well um so all the videos and all the pictures and all that stuff work on there and um and as we've done nice things i've gathered um testimonials along the way and yeah, you've been your 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 the range of images that you've picked up really I just find really showed so many different kind of aspects and tones and colors of the band. Yeah. It's it's um I've, I've rarely seen such contrasting kind of images on other band websites. It looks really great, yeah. I have to say. Yeah, it's it's been um uh sometimes you know what I do as well. Sometimes I'll take my camera to the show. Mm. I'll give it to one of the production guys and say, look, you know, if I know it's a good sort of room and good looking room and I'll just say, look, snap away. You know, it's yeah. photography these days. Just snap as much as you can. And he's not a photographer. I'll just put it on an automatic setting and get him to snap. And you know what? We've used so many of those images for, <laughs> you know, those, those actually paid off. So yeah. it doesn't mean you have to hire photographers or do these. You just got to collect stuff and have cameras ready and just, uh, yeah, just make, take advantage of it all the time, you know? Yeah, just leverage on it, every opportunity you've got, isn't it? Yeah. So tell us, uh, we're just going to come to the end. Yeah. What advice would you give to anybody looking to kind of follow the, the kind of the path which you've gone down, which is, you know, really successfully mixing, you know, the cover stuff with the original stuff is there anything if somebody's looking to go down that path what what advice would you give them well if i think that not to be afraid of uh you know showing both sides and and don't think um you you have to have two websites two identities and all that because you know i mean the beatles started off playing covers you know this is, mm. and and you know that early stuff was great and it's that's that's who they were that's that's how they got paid you know and playing rock and roll songs and so i just think just do it you know just get get in a room play some music you know um if if you're looking to make a living out of you know doing the the, the corporate and that then get a lot more than the music together get the look going because you know people are, if you're doing someone's wedding they need you to look the part do that always be better dressed than anybody at the function but do that and then you know, and if, you, if you're passionate about doing original stuff, do it, write, record, get videos together, even if it's on the iPhone, get creative and just and get the stuff up there online and just, uh, yeah, enjoy the ride. Take action. Excellent. Yep. Good stuff, Dom. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Been really interesting. Yep. And, um, you know, hopefully in the next uh, year, 18 months or so, you'll come back on and tell us how things are going. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you from my L.A. mansion. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. You're not there at the moment, there, evidently. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Listen, good stuff. Thanks a lot. We'll speak to you again Take soon. Take care. Bye bye. Cheers then. So there it is. Uh, my interview with uh, Dominic Halpin. I hope you got a lot of value out of that. There was plenty of stuff in there to. Uh, keep you thinking about if you're looking to blend you know the two your cover band project uh, which maybe pays for its originals your originals projects lots to think about there um, if you've got any questions um, please do get in touch brad at gigging success.com if you haven't downloaded the guide yet please do cover band essentials guide you can go to gigging success.com forward slash cbe where you can get five free and easy killer tactics and strategies to get more bookings and dominate your competition in the current economy. Uh, until next time, I shall see you then.